Hey guys, welcome back to Eat Baila Travel. I'm Jenny and this is Kevin. And today we are excited to explore Merida for the first time as potential inhabitants of the city. We visited about two years ago for the first time on vacation and we fell in love with it so much we thought that this could potentially be our new home. So now that we're here visiting this time around, we are going to analyze, evaluate, reflect on what might make this city our new home. We're also here to figure out whether we can handle the heat. We're hoping not to <laughs> melt the month that we're here in Merida. So we came purposely during the month of April and May to make sure that we can handle this heat. And the heat so far has been easily every day 100 degrees up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so far we haven't melted, um, but we'll see. Let's, let's hope that we're still good by the end of this. is one of those. It's a gorgeous park with restaurants that has patio seating underneath trees and palm trees. So day or night this is a great place to hang out at but the best time to come is on Thursdays when they have traditional serenatas here on the plaza. So the stage behind me is where they have the traditional serenatas every Thursday before the pandemic and hopefully sometime soon after. Honestly the serenata tradition is what makes this Plaza so special because there are people who come and dance, there's a group of music, there are professional dancers and just people from the community who come and enjoy the music and share in that happiness. You know us, we love to be anywhere that there's music and dancing and so we fell in love with this place instantly, specifically this park. So this is how we decide whether or not to call Merida home. The things that are important to us are size, safety, climate, food, health and fitness, and of course, a dance scene. So let's start with number one and talk about the size of Merida. The city of Merida is located on the northwest part of the state of Yucatan. It's the capital of the state and it's also the largest city in the entire peninsula of Yucatan, which means it's actually larger than Cancun. There are about one million people living in this city, so I would call it a medium-sized city compared to our home city of Chicago. It's definitely much smaller, but it's large enough. Traveling from the north end to the south end is still going to be a significant drive especially if there's traffic we haven't done it yet but i would guess it might take anywhere from about 40 minutes from north to south but the reason i mentioned that is because it also reminds me of chicago in a sense that it's a city of neighborhoods there are tons of colonias or just different different neighborhoods that characterize where you live in merida so when you say you, you live in merida they'll ask which colonia or which you know in other words like which neighborhood or which jardin too. yeah There's so we're jardines, so. there are jardines in the merida there's santiago there are there's garcia jineres so many jardines. <laughs> i don't even know them all yet, yeah but that was just to name a few examples just like how chicago has pilsen little village ukrainian village chinatown and so on the reason we mention that is because every colonia and every jardin Every little town has its little magic to it. Um, certain neighborhoods provide certain culture, certain food. We, um, so yeah, as, as we keep driving around and exploring Merida, we keep realizing that everything that we like from Chicago, they, uh, they have it around here. Korean food, Thai food, Indian food. Yes, that's another thing. It has a very metropolitan feel to it, um, which as far as we're hearing, it's, it's a pretty recent new thing with the recent growth that Merida has experienced. The availability of international restaurants, international banks, um, huge shopping malls with H&M's and Zara's and a variety of American, European shopping centers. So They even have a Tesla here. <laughs> yeah. Tesla. I mean, you have all 
things that you would find, almost all things that you would find in just about any metropolitan city. But one of my favorite things is that it has a small town feel to it. The neighborhoods are very homey. The city as a whole um, is full of such kind and wonderful people. So it really helps to make a large city feel smaller. Another important part is safety. Uh, Merida is considered the safest city in Mexico, also the safest city of Latin America, and the safest city in North America with a population nearly of a million. I mean, if we ever want to have kids and raise a family, I think Merida would be a perfect place to do so. Um, you can walk at any time of the day if you can survive the heat at midday. <laughs> But at night, you know, it tends to cool off a little bit and it's really nice. You can walk around, come to the parks, have a marquesita, never feel like if you leave your bike out, they're gonna steal it or certain situations where you feel unsafe walking in the neighborhoods, never. Um, there's a lot of police, there's a lot of surveillance. But not in an intimidating way, which I would say I've definitely felt in other parts of Mexico. Here, it's you can walk around and not have to worry about being assaulted or robbed or, you know, random bullet. Um, and so we, we, we speak based off of where we're coming from. So relatively, you know, when we're looking for a, a new safe home, Mexico doesn't normally come to people's minds. But if you haven't heard of Merida, then maybe you haven't heard how safe it can be. How hot is it? Oh my God, it's 100 degrees, feels like 109. Ready to see what it looks like underneath this face mask? How do I look? <laughs> Holy crap, this is this is from walking around downtown for an hour, so granted this isn't an everyday thing, but oh my god, sweat stash all day, every day. Again, if you can handle the heat, Merida is a place for you. We came here during the months of April and May because... Which they say are the hottest. Some compare it, it's the closest thing to hell. <laughs> But, it, so we came to see for ourselves and they weren't lying, it's, it's really, really hot. Uh, during, what, 11.30 a.m. to maybe four o'clock, you do not want to be out in the streets because you will melt. Like, this is no BS, this you will melt. Avoid the sun in the hours of 11 to two at least. We, for the most part, don't really go outside unless we have to during those hours, but in the evenings, it's pretty great. I mean, I'm sweating, don't get me wrong but I'm comfortable, I'm good, I'll take this. If you're uncomfortable with sweating, then Merida is not a place for you. Uh, we constantly sweat, we're sitting <laughs> down eating, we're sweating, we watch TV, we're sweating. And you know, one of the things that people complain about around here, or just Mexico in general, the electricity tends to be very expensive. Very expensive. So this, don't expect to be running your air conditioning 24-7. We use it um, at night just to be able to sleep comfortably. But other than that, you just survive off of fans all day. Yep. So it is technically a tropical climate with wet season and dry season with April and May usually being the hottest months. Um, so as long as we can survive April and May, then we know that we can live here. <laughs> and that's why we're here. <laughs> but we also like that it's really close to beaches. So we're about a half hour drive to Pro Puerto Progreso, which is the, one of the closest beaches. But there are also beaches all, around, all along the Emerald Coast or La Costa Esmeralda of Yucatan, which have amazing, beautiful beaches. Just as beautiful as the ones in Cancun, but way less crowded, much more calm. So they're honestly really hidden gems. So if you're interested in these kinds of beaches, definitely check out the Emerald Coast. And beaches are one way to cool off or hang out in, in the nature. But one of our other favorite things to do are to hang out in cenotes. Yeah, you want to cool off, you have to oh go to Hacenda because the water is nice and cold. These things are such an adventure. The theory is that the cenotes were created when the meteors hit the earth and wiped out the dinosaurs and created these wells in the ground or sinkholes in the ground that are, have fresh water underneath and so people can now swim in them. But there are other stories that tell that the Mayans believe that these were sacred bodies of water. Geographically speaking, Merida is about a three or four hour drive west of Cancun. 
So that means that we've got a really great destination if you want a, a, a longer weekend getaway or a more luxurious weekend getaway. But there are so many amazing travel destinations in the peninsula of Yucatan that are within driving distance. I don't ever imagine us getting bored. Like if we had the opportunity to do less international travel and got the chance to explore more of the Yucatan, we've heard people say that they've been spending their entire lives exploring in the peninsula and, and the, seen it all. They've, they still haven't seen it all. So I'm excited about, about that possibility. But also if the travel bug is really biting, then we have access to international airports like the Merida Airport, the Cancun Airport. There are flights all over the world, especially in Cancun for very, very affordable prices. So that'll be a big plus to have, to be that close to an international airport if we do want to do some international traveling. This is one of our favorite restaurants in Merida. Every time we've been here, we make sure we start here and leave here. It's called Marisco's Chichi. And why are we here? Because they have an amazing octopus, el pulpo a las brasas. It's mm, so soft and succulent. Technically, octopus season doesn't start until August but they managed to have the best octopus year round at this restaurant anyway. Now, not just because we like to eat, which duh, we do, but also because it's an important part of being healthy and being able to access fresh and not so preserved food to us is super important. Um, and when food has to travel so far in the United States to get to us, it's no longer fresh. So it's something I look forward to about living in Medina. That you know, should it potentially be chosen as our right. future home. We're still and, thinking about it. And it's not perfect either. Like here in Merida, you can find fresh seafood. Uh, August is known for its octopus season, which is super delicious. You can get a lot of fresh fish. Uh, you can't find oysters. There's a lot of pork and but you we... can't find beef. Like like beef, like we are used to they don't in raise, the northern part of Mexico. They don't raise cattle as much as they do in other areas, so that's brought in from other states. Oysters are brought in from other states, but so it's it's kind like of give and take. Something we really enjoy about Merida is that because of its tropical climate, we have access to fresh fruits: uh, papaya, cocos, plátanos, mangos, mangos. <laughs> It's really nice to have that access to tropical fruits and we can have it at any time and it's nice and fresh, especially the papaya and the mangoes. Right now we're in mango season and let me tell you, it is delicious. Delicious, especially cocos. Oh, especially the ice cream. That beef is, is, is a con for me because I love my carnitas asadas and steaks. It's a, it, you can tell the prices at, at stores that beef and chicken are a little bit more expensive, but hey, if we can have some octopus and pavo and turkey, you know, we're good. Like. We should also mention that the Yucatecan uh, diet primarily uses pork as its main source of protein. So a lot of local dishes like the pork chuk or the puerco um, empanizado. So, so you'll have a lot of like pork based dishes which are delicious but not the healthiest so we don't eat them very often um, so just something to keep in mind is you know if you're thinking about what you're gonna eat if you're out here on topic of food moving into the topic of fitness there are lots and lots of fitness clubs and organizations here in Merida which I've noticed they've got all kinds of yoga studios Pilates kickboxing martial, Crossfit, martial, martial arts, arts gyms yeah. dance academies and studios of all kinds like the other day we saw a uh, kids Bollywood and belly dancing group practicing in the park which is super cool uh, there's like any kind of physical activity that you like except for like snowboarding and skiing and of course one of our personal favorites dance classes and dance studios for salsa and bachata we actually signed up for one um, we've been taking classes with astro salsa with jose luis he's a wonderful instructor and we've been practicing our on two salsa moves 
He's really great and we've enjoyed getting to know the dance community through the classes. Honestly, there haven't been many socials because of the pandemic, but in our prior visit, we noticed that there was a huge salsa community presence that we really, really loved, which actually is a good segue into our next favorite thing when it comes to looking for a new home is the importance of some sort of dance scene for us. Salsa. The salsa community is big in Merida. We really enjoy that you can go out every night in Merida, especially in Centro, and, and check out live salsa. Uh, places like La Negrita has salsa. Mercado uh, 60. The fact that there's a strong presence of a salsa community already here is awesome because that means that making friends will be easy, doing what we love will be easy, and and we can do it every night too. And we can we do really it every like night. Too. Yeah, I would say it's really hard to find places that have all the things check all your boxes. Like it's like dating. You're looking for a partner to check all your boxes, and very few often you actually end up with a partner that checks all your boxes. <laughs> but point is, sometimes it just takes that one thing to really make you fall in love, and you'll overlook the annoying things. Like the heat, like the heat, like the heat. It's, it's hot here, it's hot here. <laughs> we really like it here, but only time will tell if this place will end up being home. Right now we've got a few things to sort out back in Chicago, some things possibly pending in Oaxaca. So let us know what you think based off of what you heard. Do you think that this is a good place? I mean, lots of other people have moved here and ultimately it's, it's an individual decision. But let us know what your thoughts are, um, if, especially if you weren't super familiar with Merida before this. We look forward to reading your comments. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned because in our next video we are going to go house hunting, apartments, condos, and give you guys prices. Just to give you an idea of, of how much Merida costs. So stay tuned. Se cuidan, se bañan y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Ciao. Ciao.